Welcome. Here I want to unpack for you the incredible story about John Bunyan. Many of the things that happened in John Bunyan's life are very relevant to our lives now. Some of the challenges that he had we face today. And so as I go through this story, I'm sure that there'll be much that will resonate with you. But let's start the story at a scene of a 16 year old lad who's on the front line of the of the Battle of Naresby. Now this was a the crucial battle in the English Civil War between the parliamentarians, the Roundheads, and the uh, Royalists who were for King Charles II. And this lad, 16 years of age, finds himself in the front line. He's fired his musket. He's surrounded by smoke. And the only way forward for him now is to take out his sword. And he says that he was thrusting his sword from the left to the right, and he had no idea who he was hitting. He saw such horrors in that war. And John Bunyan was put on to the duty at the end because he was a very stocky uh, lad. He was put on duty to, to uh, carry the dead bodies and to bury them. And he saw such horrific things and he saw the massacres that had gone on behind the scenes, which scarred him for the rest of his life really. But it made him question about the whole thing of life. And wasn't there a better way to live? This uncouth, uh, foul-mouthed young lad who was known as the bully of the village, um, the scoundrel bordering on the criminal, and, and yet he was already beginning to have a transformation. This was further uh, brought to his attention because he reflected on his life and realized that the, there had been three times when his life had been spared. On two separate occasions, he'd fallen out of a boat and was drowning because he couldn't swim and he was rescued. And on the third occasion, when he was in the army, he was supposed to be on sentry duty and another guy asked to take his place and that guy was shot in the head. And so that made John Bunyan question, well, why have I been allowed to live? Um, but it took him many years for him to really work this out because he had been brought up in a very uh, atheistic environment. Um, he didn't really believe in God. And he, in fact, he felt that the devil had a hold in his life and would always do so. But at the age of 19, he finally left the army and uh, he married a young girl that he'd met while he was in the army. And he, uh, he eloped with her. And um, there's a lovely story that she was actually a, a believer. And uh, before she eloped with him, she prayed and asked God if it was right for her to do that. And John Bunyan had to stand there and wait. And that made him question, well, what is this thing that people are praying to God? Anyway, he started family life and he settled down back in Bedford, which was where his hometown was. And he was still searching and just wondering about life. He went to an Anglican church, but he did find it uh, rather dull and the liturgy just didn't do anything for him. And one day he met two ladies who were talking in the street about being born again. And he questioned them and found out that they went to a, a free church. And so he joined the free church and he took his wife along with him. And it was at the free church that he just, he went through his transformation that he says, where he realized that he was a sinner. And on one Sunday afternoon, when he should really have been at church, he was, he was playing some game or other, a bit like cricket, I think. And he felt that God spoke to him and said, will you leave your sins and live or will you keep your sins and die forever? And that started him on his journey of salvation. And he went to the pastor and had a long chat with the pastor and eventually prayed with him and uh, said, I want the Lord Jesus to take away my sins and for me to start this new life, which he did. And he grew very quickly in his understanding of scriptures. He was very good at reading. He was very good at telling Bible stories. He had a gift for being able to be imaginative. And so this gave him great power in his preaching. And he uh, was sought after preacher. Now, the parliamentarians won the Civil War and nonconformists were allowed to uh, preach in the open. They were allowed to set up their own churches. But eventually, uh, England went back to having a monarchy and the nonconformists were being shut down again. 
And John Bunyan was warned that this was going to happen and he was warned that if he preached at this certain village outside Bedford that he would be arrested. But he continued to do so. He went and as he stood up to preach, the, uh, the constable came out of the audience, or the congregation we should say, and arrested him. They didn't think it was going to be for very long. They thought it would be for a few days. They thought it would be sorted out. But John Bunyan had made many enemies during his preaching. He'd spoken out against rich noblemen and the way that they sat on their money and that they were, uh, you know, abusing the poor and that they were not allowing people to have access to the true gospel. So he made many enemies and these enemies were determined that they were going to keep him in prison. And so they had trumped up charges for him, which resulted with him being in prison for three months. At the end of the three months, he was approached and said, if you will stop preaching, John Bunyan, then you can be allowed to go free. John Bunyan said, no, I've been called to preach the gospel. And so he went into prison or stayed in prison for another three months. This went on and on, repeating itself. And eventually John Bunyan spent 12 years in prison on this trumped up charge about the fact that he'd been preaching when he shouldn't be preaching. But God used him when he was in prison. He was able to use his time in there to start writing books and pamphlets, uh, which had wide distribution. And uh, notably, he wrote the famous Pilgrim's Progress while he was in prison. He used the, uh, the prisoners as his audience. And he, as he wrote each chapter, it took him a number of years to write Pilgrim's Progress. And as he wrote the chapters, he would test it out on the prisoners and he would ask them what they understood from that chapter. And if they hadn't understood the characters that he had in there and the imagery, and if they certainly hadn't understood the message that he was trying to put across, then he would change it. And he would change it until the prisoners would say, oh yes, I understand, that's what you were saying. And ultimately, some of the, the prisoners became Christians. This meant that the book had a wide readership when it was eventually published. Even from the, the poor person to the nobleman, they were all able to read this book and to understand it because the imagery and the poetry were so fantastic. At that particular time in, this, in the 1600s, there was nothing quite like it. There wasn't this poetic, visionary uh, type writing. And John Bunyan being very clever as well because the characters that he used in the book uh, and the places that he used in the book were all places around him and characters around him. So the baddies were these noblemen who put him into prison and the goodies were the, his, his family, his wife and uh, the, his other pastors. One notab noticeable, um, notable thing that happened while he was in prison was that the plague came to England and this touches a chord with us in our generation now, is that the plague came, the virus came and the, the prison warden was concerned that all the prisoners would die if the virus came uh, into the prison and so allowed all the prisoners to go home and to isolate uh, for however long it took for the virus to take its course and then they were to come back to prison. So John Bunyan had many, many months at home when he was able to spend time with his family and to teach his children. And at the end of that time, he went back to prison and he was able to finish off Pilgrim's Progress. But in his writings, he says, during this time of the, of the virus, he says, it was notable, he says, that London and Bedford were completely shut. He said, everybody was locked up in their own homes, that they didn't mix with one another. They also had self-distancing. He says that the shops were all shut. And he says, there was no transport for you to transport yourself around. How similar it is to today. But John Bunyan wrote Pilgrim's Progress and many people became Christians through it. I invite you to find out more about this incredible guy and his writings. Uh, there is a book about his life that you can read and there's also many books, not only The Pilgrim's Progress, but there's also the second book that he wrote. Um, and you could enjoy his writings and his vivid, vivid imagination that he's put into it. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's whetted your appetite and enjoy learning about this incredible guy.